You're listening to The Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio New Jersey with local credit experts Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan. Now, here's Jason and Damon. Jason Kaplan back again with Damon DiCrescenzo on the Real Estate Radio Network on this New York Jet Sunday, AFC-NFC Championship Sunday it is. Um, we have a special guest in the studio, and he said hi and a few words before, but I want to welcome Ken Lombardi here to the office. Um, he's from the Real Estate Mortgage Network, and um, he's going to be talking to us about some, some, some pitfalls and some misconceptions and, uh, I, I guess, just navigating the wild waters of mortgages nowadays, because it's all been changing over the last couple of years. Yeah, I have a question to start with, because I was wondering, you know, I come from the mortgage background, but even from the mortgage background, it's totally unclear. I want to know what the difference between a mortgage broker, a mortgage banker, Mortgage lender, uh, uh, what do all these different things do, and what's the best thing to go with, Ken? You know, it's an interesting question. Most people don't even know there is a difference, as you just said, all the different lenders. First of all, I wanted to thank Jason and um, Damon for having me on this morning. Um, it's very confusing. The mortgage industry has changed so much over the last two years, more than the previous 50, that even people in the industry are very confused right now. So when you bring up something, a point like that, what's the difference between all the all of them? It's so confusing now to even know what each one does and what the capacity of each one and what you're actually shopping for, never mind how to get the best rate. That's right. So I, the people are up against something right now that it's very difficult. And um, I'd like to go into the different facets of what's the difference between a mortgage banker, a broker, a direct lender, and a licensed mortgage banker, which this year became different. This year, everyone except banks and savings and loans were required to get licensed by the state and nationally. So what does that mean to you? It means that the people that you're working with better be licensed or at least in the process of getting licensed. Otherwise, they're doing business illegally. Well, not illegally because the banks found a loophole around the system. So your big four, um, what you call Wells Fargo, you know, basically Bank of America, etc., have found a way that they don't have to become licensed at this point, although there is a strong legislation out in opposition right now for next year for them to have to go along course. So what does that mean to you? That means you can go into a bank and talk to an officer who's not even licensed or could just have been hired a, a week ago and he's handling your mortgage That's application. That's scary. That's how it used to be in the mortgage business. You, you had a, a loan officer, which was a completely... You know, it's it's just semantics. a guy that you hire off the street and slap a title on him, but he knows nothing about mortgages. And of course, there's a lot of political uh, and money behind it because it was cheaper for them to do it that way. But I'm not out here to bash the banks because there's great banks, there's great savings and loans. I'm here to tell you the difference and educate the consumer. What are your options? Um, 25 years in the industry, let me tell you the difference. When someone calls me and says, I'm shopping for the best rate, I'm like, Okay, now the best rate is changing while we're talking on the phone right now because we're talking about a time when interest rates are actually locked in like the stock market into worldwide markets. Right. So what I have is software. Now, what's the difference, first of all, between a wholesale rate and a retail rate? What is the difference between a wholesale rate and a retail rate? What, are the, what, the, what does the consumer wind up with? The consumer usually ends up with a retail rate if they go to a bank or a mortgage broker or a middleman because something has to be added on um, to give them that rate. A wholesale rate is a rate that comes from a direct lender who is not a bank or a savings and loan and doesn't just represent one person. I'll give you an example. Being a certified financial planner and being someone who has a, an insurance license, they taught me a while ago that, for instance, if you were to go to a state farm, travelers, or something like in that nature, they are, represent the company like a bank represents themselves. They're only going to offer you their products they don't have anything else to offer. Now, a mortgage banker, licensed mortgage banker, represents you. They represent the client. So they can utilize wholesale rates from any lender, any bank, any savings and loan, and it's the best of all worlds because you can have a direct lender who has every program under the sun, plus they can find out real time of over 170 lenders in a software who has the best rate at that particular moment at that time of day. So what chance do you have of getting the best rate when I have software that'll tell me the best rate of any lender at that moment in time? So if you were going to buy a house today, if you're going to buy a house and you're working with a real estate agent, would you walk into a branch or would you call mortgage lender? Different. 
I would get a recommendation from the real estate mortgage person or their attorney, someone who's in the business and knows inside the pits what it's really like because it's so complex today. If I always say to my real estate agents, I've been around over 20 years, that if I had 30 days to prepare someone to go for a loan, I could have it so not only could they get a better rate and lower closing costs, but make the whole process a lot less painful. But they don't. That's the problem with today's world, right? People don't plan ahead. No, it's the last minute, and then all of a sudden they wonder why it's so difficult for them, and then they wonder why they're never satisfied. Well, let's talk about it. What what would you have somebody start doing to prepare for a mortgage like that? You gentlemen brought up a very good point. First of all, you have to get your credit optimized. Even if you have a high score, the higher the score is better. I put several people into programs recently where they had less than 20% down. Most people say, I know I have to pay PMI. No, that's not true now. Let me stop you there. PMI. We talked about that. What is... because? If you don't know what PMI is, you don't know what PMI is, but it's a term that gets thrown around a lot, and it should make a difference to you because it has to do with the biggest investment of your life, your your mortgage. What is PMI, and why do people need it? Many years ago when lending first came out, they didn't have loans under 20%, and if you go to many banks, they still only will lend with 20% down. PMI was looked at as a negative. Private mortgage insurance was always looked at as a negative situation, but it's not because it allows someone to buy a home with less than 20% down whether it be an FHA loan, which is a federally housing loan that's, that's you know guaranteed by the government with 3.5% down minimum, or a conventional loan, which right now is at 5%, which has PMI. There's a difference between the two, which is another show in itself, mm. but the situation is we now have a situation where we can get people with 5% down minimum, we can get them a loan with a PMI that has no monthly fee, and it can be very expensive, it, with a 5% down loan, a loan of three hundred and fifty to 400000 based on credit score, can be over $300 a month. Wow. And we can eliminate that. How do you do that? We structure it right up front so they can utilize um, seller concessions or lender. Um, we can give lender credits, uh, i.e. they can pay part of the PMI up front. There's many different ways. That's good. Listen, that's thinking outside the box. That's why you need an expert. That's why you need a guru. Guys, if you're just joining us uh, and you're wondering what wonderful information you're listening to, this is the Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio Network. This is Damon DiCrescenzo. I'm with Jason Kaplan. I'm with Ken Lombardi. Uh, Give us a call, 1-800-411-3050 or our local number, 973-771-5118. Ken, do all mortgages need PMI or, or just the ones that are above uh, 80% loan to value? Loans that are above 80% loan to value require you to somehow handle the PMI process. And what it does is it protects the bank, right? So think about it for a sec. If the bank gave you a 100% loan and you went nuts and decided not to pay, the entire process of the bank giving you a loan costs a considerable amount of money that that bank understands that they're going to make up over the life of that loan. If you default... Very quickly, the bank has to have some sort of a means to protect themselves. And that's really where that, am I right in saying that? That's where that insurance comes in. It protects the bank at the end of the day. What they do is get 25% coverage to 30% depending on the lender. What that means, if you bought a $100,000 home, what they're saying is, okay, you're putting 5% into it, which is $5,000. We will cover the lender up to 25%, which gives them $30,000 equity into that property. And you're paying for the difference, which is protecting the lender, not protecting you. And then when, how long does it take to get off and so forth? That's another issue again in itself. That's right. I have another question for you, and I'm sure I am not the only person who wonders this. So uh, when we watch the TV and there's a, a, a Quicken or what was the other one? Ditech used to be the big one. Ditech. Uh, and then somebody spoke really fast at the end. Remember, APR 2695 percent what are they talking about? What's an APR and why should I care what it is? My mother always told me, if you can't say anything good about anybody, don't say anything at all. Sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's funny because I actually had someone mention that to me the other day, an attorney. He says, you notice how they do it at the end, and then it's 6.12, blah, 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 really fast, and you can't understand it. What's the difference between an APR and a regular rate? Did you know that every lender calculates APR slightly differently? Which is scary. Which is scary. So that's supposed to be something that's made so you can compare loans, and the lenders themselves don't even calculate it correctly. Um, the annual percentage rate, APR stands for annual percentage rate, which is very, very 
tricky when it comes to mortgages because a mortgage is based usually over 30 years, not over one year. So where an APR may be very, very helpful with a credit card or a car loan, it's very, very misconceiving with a, as far as a mortgage. You know, it's another good example of how the federal government tries to put in regulations to, to try to help the consumer. And I think that in, in from an outside perspective looking in, it does help. You know, it does make sense. But really, all they're doing is confusing people. And what good does it do if it's an afterthought? In a commercial, what good does it do if it's mentioned in a hushed tone really quickly? It doesn't do anyone any good. But it is an important number and one that people should understand. Do you go through the APR when you go through loan documents with the client? Not only do I go through the APR and how it's calculated, I also go through every single closing cost. One of the big mistakes that happened this year was the new good faith estimate that the government put together that's supposed to help the consumer. Well, not only is a good faith estimate more confusing than ever, it doesn't even have the person's payment or the closing costs that they have to bring to the closing. So therefore, I have to go through line by line every single closing cost and where it comes from and how it's computed and in many ways how they can save on this cost. Yeah, well, that's important. You know, back when we used to do mortgages all those years ago, it was one page and it's so confusing. And I think that it was structured that way for a reason. They're not looking really to make this easy for people. They want them to get in and out and pay as much money as possible. It's over 80 pages now on the average mortgage application. And this is supposedly making it easier for consumers. Tell me how that happened. Yeah, And a lot of it is legalese. Jason, you know, I mean, at, at, at the end of the day, I, and I like attorneys, but not all that much. And I certainly don't <laughs> like reading what they write uh, because it's, it's a jargon uh, that... It really isn't meant for us uh, common folk, us, us laymen, to understand completely. Us. And when you have 80 pages of that in the biggest investment that you'll ever make in your life, it can be a daunting thing. Who reads it? Let me ask you a question. Do you think that 95% of the people that are closing on loans out there are actually reading every line of those closing documents? It is not happening. I've been in a couple of closings before, and, and a couple, more than a couple, but no one reads them. They glance, they initial. I mean, it takes an hour and a half just to initial all the pages and sign it. Which is why you need a great real estate attorney for any kind of transaction that you're doing. And if you do not have one, if your mortgage broker or your realtor is not giving you good advice to get a great real estate attorney, not a good one, pick up the phone and give us a call because I will personally give you one. 973-771-5118. Where are rates these days? What can people expect uh, in regards to it, I know it's fluctuating all over the map. And even while we're talking right now, and you mentioned it before, as we're speaking, those rates are moving up. But over the last three months, are we seeing rates go up? Well, when it's, and it's a very good question because people always ask, what is the rates these days? And I tell them, you know, it's different for every single person in every situation, number one. But number two, what's happened recently, the 10-year treasury over the past three months has gone up to 3.5. Still great rates. Hit up about 5%. It's re- re- retreated a little bit since December. So now a 30-year fixed for someone who's got re- very, very decent credit over 680, you can get for approximately 4.625 with zero points. You can't beat that. That is fantastic. That's amazing compared, compared to where it's been the last forever. It's, it's, it's one of the best rates in 50 years. It and is the best rate. Reason enough to go out and buy a home. Like if you're sitting on the fence, if you're speaking with your wife and saying, hey, I think we should go buy a house, guess what? Now is the time to do it uh, with rates where they are and with the, 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 the potential of Fannie and Freddie and FHA raising the FICO limit to be able to buy. Before they do that, you should get out and buy. If you're not working with an awesome mortgage broker if you're not working with an awesome real estate agent again we can refer you one give us a call at 973-771-5118 uh you know one last thing ken i wanted to talk to you quick about real estate mortgage network why don't you tell me a little bit about that company is that's that's a major organization yes we've been around since 1987 and um customer service oriented we work with a lot of builders and realtors and have a very high retention rate actually we're the number one independent in new jersey and and basically one of the main advantages that we have over every other lender out there is we have $1.5 billion, it's doubled this year, in uh, portfolio securities in Wall Street, Fannie Mae, Ginny Mae backed securities. And what that means to you as a consumer is we can portfolio a loan and not only do loans that others can't, but we can service that loan. So that means you pay your loan to us. 
That's uh, important. Now, you know, that makes a big deal because you guys, it starts with you, it ends with you. It's not hopping all over the place and winding up in some weird bank in Germany somewhere. It starts with you and ends with you, and that makes a huge difference to people these days. And we're local, so we're right in, in River Edge. Well, listen, if you're looking for a mortgage expert, and not somebody who's a couple years, who's green in the business, an expert, a guru, and someone who'll shoot you straight, you have to pick up the phone, and I want you to call Ken Lombardi from Real Estate Mortgage Network. His direct number is 973-632-3487. Again, 973-632-3487. And if you didn't jot it down, you can always ask us. This is the Credit Pros on the Real Estate Radio Network. Please give us a call if you have any questions about your credit, about mortgages, and about real estate. We're happy to help. Our number is 973-771-5118, 973-771-5118, or visit us on the web at creditrepair.to. You'll want to stick around. After the break, we're going to be doing some awesome credit true or false. You think you know the answers? We'll see. Stick around. For all your credit problems, concerns, or questions, call the show's off-air number at 973-771-5118 and speak to the hosts of the show, Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan, directly. 973-771-5118. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. The Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio New Jersey is hosted by local credit and finance experts Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan. The purpose of the show is to help consumers understand what's really going on with their credit. They're teaching you the why and the how-to, so you'll always be one step ahead of everyone else. If you are having problems qualifying for a purchase or you're tired of high interest rates because of bad credit, Jason Kaplan can help. Call Jason directly at 973-771-5111. That's 973-771-5118. Take advantage of speaking with Jason anytime you're having a credit problem. Having someone who can answer all of your questions that truly cares about you and your family's best interest is priceless. Call Jason Kaplan and the Credit Pros today and you'll be glad you did. 973-771-5118. That's 973-771-5118. Or you can visit creditrepair.to for more info. For all your credit problems, concerns, or questions, Call the show's off-air number at 973-771-5118 and speak to the hosts of the show, Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan, directly. 973-771-5118.